people and places depicted in the Planet Mikey podcast are purely fictional. Any similarities to actual people, places, or things, living or dead, is purely coincidental. No animals were harmed in any way during the production of this podcast. Well, okay, we did play Red Rocket with one of the puppies. Okay, here we go. The Pen and Maggie Show. He's about to get crazy and wild. Stay for a while. Don't touch a radio dial. The Pen and Maggie Show. Kicking it back. Sports talk. Listen to that and stay tuned for some giggles and laughs. Go. <laughs> Mr. Pewtersmith, I'm glad you finally came around about this place. Peter, I got to admit, it's not bad at all. I never thought I'd get used to the idea of giving up work and just devoting my life to leisure. I guess this is what people mean by the word relax. Just remember not to go out into actual Florida. You don't want to meet those people. <laughs> Welcome to the Planet Mikey Show. You know, you could really do an entire fresh series of cops yeah. uncensored. Yeah. It'd be the most entertaining series in the history of the world if you stayed in Florida for <laughs> every story. What is it about Florida? Is it the heat? There's a, it's a freak show down there. Now... Are there normal people there? Sure. Respectable people? Sure. Retirement guys, folks like that. Uh, you know, great religious people. and Yeah, every kind of people lives in Florida. But because of that, <laughs> it's a freak show but down there. But you know there. actually why? Do you know why it's, it's why, always Why Florida? is that, Billy, from Florida? Florida, Florida ha well, that's why I have to defend where I live. It's a uh, Florida has the most uh, strict sunshine state law. Of any state in the country, which is what? Which is every state and every state institution has to release all internal communications within 30 days, 30 or 60 days. It's a very short window. Bingo. So the police and everything, yeah. Oh, okay. that's why they say it is. So for more states, like look at, uh, you know, it takes longer. But for I don't. Florida, I mean, you know, it's it's hard. I don't understand a word he just said. I don't either. Did you Did you understand anything? Who is yeah, that of course. guy? <laughs> Billy, you know what? Uh, Cops is back, by the way. Yeah. I know. It's on Fox uh, streaming. Fox Nation streaming, yeah. yeah. But I, I guess they did it out of New York. And so, so is the Hunter Biden story. You what should introduce our special guest. Well, I'm going to introduce all you guys when, as soon as I goddamn well please. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, this is the Planet Mikey podcast, okay? God even doesn't even interfere with what I say. Jeez. Right? We're okay. on. We'll Planet see my I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Planet Mikey podcast, episode whatever. I'm Mike Adams, your host, along with Bill Smith. Bill Smith, of course, whose last high school reunion had to be held in a speakeasy because, well, <laughs> prohibition. Now, I'm not saying he's old, but his diploma was printed on yellowed parchment. Ben Kitchen, whose last high school reunion was... a uh, that was a mosh pit full of people on ecstasy. And his diploma is uh, on display at his house on a puke-stained placemat from Sonic. And Billy, Big Billy O, Mikey's pal from his childhood, whose last high school reunion was Saturday. That's right. At Georgina's in Bolton, Connecticut. A true landmark. <laughs> A true landmark for stretch marks. <laughs> Billy's the only guy I've ever known, and this is a true story, who could drink eight beers, barf up his McDonald's dinner, including a totally intact pickle slice, and then drink eight more beers. Hi, Billy. It's a true story. It's a very true story. He did it on my steps at my parents' house. <laughs> And they found it. <laughs> and then no, they knew. I didn't clean it. Somebody was drinking the night before and going to McDonald's. So this is the uh, this is the Planet Monkey reunion show. We, yeah, we did have our 50th high school reunion. Billy and I, you guys should have been there. Uh, You're going to tell us about it? You no, want, they you should. What, why so why much, should so we have been there? I'm going to tell you why you should have oh, been there. thank you. <laughs> they, we had the best weed. No, I'm <laughs> Seriously, though. It was uh, Saturday. I saw more comb-overs. <laughs> oh. You know how they have flyovers? You know, you go to an air show, and, they, and you go to a high school reunion, 50th. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to see not flyovers, comb-overs. You'll see flies down. Guys going on the You'll see dead flies. You're flying low. Yeah, the guy will go, so what? 
Nobody gives a rat's ass anymore. And I said, yes. So did you wear your uh, Dr. Robert Leonard t-shirt there? No, no, I didn't wear You know what? It was, I got to tell you this. Uh, Billy will t- attest to this. I was in the top five best looking guys there. Totally. Totally. You know, and it, I'm not and bragging. <laughs> Believe me, if you were there, you'd know. I'm not bragging. But I think I was. I think I made the top five. Oh, definitely, definitely. And and our, our, our wives were oh. definitely in the top and I think that's the reason why we two. look good, too. I think they were in the right? top two. Had to Our be. Our wives. Had to be. In case they're listening. So this. did you draw attention when you walked in with your beautiful women? Yes. Well, they did. And they were they wondering, did. who the fuck are these guys? Yeah. And why do they look so good while we look like catchers' yeah. I heard. I heard one guy point at me. He said, why'd that guy bring his daughter? <laughs> and, and you look at him with one. a thumbs up, right? Yeah. <laughs> you knew it, buddy. Uh, anyway, thank God for the name tags. Because when you go to the fiftieth, I went to the twenty, thirty, four. You know, whatever. You go, you go to them, and you get older, and you go, and you say, uh, "Well, last time we walked in, Billy, remember I said to you, why, why did, why these people bring their parents?" You said, "That's not the parents." That, oh, oh, oh my God, you're right. That's them. That's okay. It was was that your uh, high school graduation picture on your um, on your ID? Yeah. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. Ben, you know, you, Ben didn't know me in high school. You know, because I have to say... No, no. You'll love this picture. wasn't quite a lot. You were a handsome, dashing yeah, lad. Can you hold preppy. that up to the camera? Ruggedly just, No, no, no. That's not you. Yeah. That's me. That's the preppy. So, so uh, hold on, hold on. How many times did you get your nose broken? Because it's after not the that same or before nose. that? No, after. after. Yeah, after, uh, about uh, probably four or five times uh, after that picture was taken. And yeah. maybe four or five before. Anyway... My, yeah, my nose is like a. Now it's become like a, a dimpled ski ski slope. It's really Dolphin. gross. You weren't a bad looking kid. Not bad, you know. Ruggedly handsome. I did okay with both the men and the women. Oh yeah. He no, the binary. men were my friends and the women were my friends. Hey, I'm see. sure they were your friends too. I was uh, pretty active in my prime. <laughs> oh, you spit. <laughs> An old joke. <laughs> well, the whole gender thing has me confused now. Totally. I am so sick of this because it's okay to cause a stir. At let's say someone showed up at, at our high school reunion and we didn't know who they were because they, they switched from being a man to a woman or vice versa. Oh, there you go. Hey, yeah, you know, that's just what you're playing. A, really, you're playing a joke on people. <laughs> you kind of are. Hi, know? Mike. My name is Margie. You used to know me as Mike. Well, it's like that guy on BZ Radio, the traffic guy, and I, no, he's not a guy anymore. Kristen Eck. Yeah, that's right. Chris, he was, what was his name? Chris Eck or Joe Eck or something? I think it was, might have been Chris. I'm not sure. Oh, it, yeah. It wasn't Dennis Eck. No. <laughs> but it, he was, he was a he, and then he became a, a, a woman, and, and now, but he's still doing traffic on the same radio station, but he changed his name to Kristen. Yeah. And to me, when he, and then his voice is still a guy's voice, right? So you listen for the traffic report, and he's on the helicopter. He's like, oh, we're going to burn a mass pike. I'm going to 95, 93. Kristen Eck uh, reporting from WBZ. And he sounds like a guy. So you say, okay, maybe he just has a, if you're new to the area, you don't know anything about that. But it causes confusion That's it. amongst people mentally, and it causes them not to listen to what the traffic is, but and just did, try to figure out why did he end Do you know up anybody in our class age that did that? No, I know some women who should have become men from <laughs> or, our class. Or they, they were all there. Have, but... Right? But they were still women, uh, sadly. Maybe we weren't being brainwashed back then. Hey, they just made, uh, or they've nominated Leah Thomas to be the woman of the year. Yeah. Oh, yes, right. At, at Penn State, is it? Uh, is Women's it? Athlete of the Year in the whole league. Yeah. You know, they have, everybody nominates one from their team. And they, but is it right to even to even nominate a, a, a woman swimmer who hasn't always been a no, woman? Martina no, Martina Navratilova even spoke out about it. She's against it. She said, that's, that's just not right. That's right. not fair. Right. And you know when it's Martina, that's not a backhanded compliment. Well, she's she's a bit of a lefty, but I, she just sees the sense in this one. I, think. <laughs> I thought I'd serve that your way. And see yeah, what thanks you thought very much. That went right by me as you I saw. Have, seriously, I have endless love for Martina. Now. I thought it was a fault, but, but oh, that's no, just that, me. The net effect of that was that uh, you know. <laughs> I'll give you a backhand if you keep this up. I, I didn't use you that. Guys are crossing uh, do you want to try doubles? <laughs> do, do you want to try doubles? <laughs> oh. It's uh, pretty fresh. good. What I a, think he needs what, fresh balls. What a racket. <laughs> what a racket we're making here. The ball boy just spoke. All right, fuck all of you. Oh, man. I love you. You want to restring that joke? I got it. <laughs> all right. Now, back to the show. Hey, we learned it from you, That's so right. don't be mad at us. <laughs> That's right. Learned what? We learned it by watching you, Dad. 
That's right. <laughs> oh, with the dad jokes? That's right, dad jokes. You know, I can tell you, my kids love them. <laughs> At least the kids that still love me. Anyway, now, can I just say a couple things here? What? Well, I'll just say one. I'll say one thing. We are sponsored by, I see how I slide it on, MikeStacyGolf.com. Oh, now, yeah. I've told you this, up at the Shining Rock, where Billy and I are going to play Thursday morning at 8.51. Hold on, with the birds and the trees and the... Well, we're not going to play with the birds and the trees, I mean, but play I with the golf balls. Yeah, and the... In the morning, tomorrow morning is supposed to be a nice, beautiful yeah. morning, warm later in the <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't, yeah, we don't hit... hit off the tee. Tell us about the golf course. Birds. Go ahead. It's me. The Audubon Society is going to come to your house and kick, the, kick you in the ass. Mm. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. MikeStacyGolf.com. Now, you go there to line up your your next golf lesson. Like, my son Andy's taking golf lessons now. He's going to be so good someday at golf. I know he is because I wasn't, and I'm one of those stage mothers. Mm. <laughs> uh Mike Stacy has a, has a camps for kids. He's got clinics. He's got individual p- personalized lessons. He's got a driving range up there. This is Shining Rock Golf Club, one of the most notoriously difficult courses. Very hard. In all of central Massachusetts, Blackstone Valley. Uh, but he's, uh, he's a great guy. He's the golf pro up there, and I, I completely trust him for my son's future PGA career. Uh, MikeStacyGolf.com. Take it out. Check it out. And then uh, have a golf lesson like Smitty's going to have. Even though he's lefty, he's never played golf. That's right. We're going to get him some lefty clubs and get him up there and have Mike Stacy show you how to hit the ball deep. Bingo. You can get you out if there. you want to. Got to get you out there. Yep. Uh, and by the way, if you, don't, if, you, if you don't have time for a lesson, or you play at least play Shining Rock and find out the first four holes are going to show you exactly whether you're a man or a mouse. Oh, God. <laughs> And we're playing there uh, Thursday morning. That's right. Uh, by the way, on your calendar, too, I, I, you know, Jeff Deal's a friend of mine. He's a running for governor. Mm. And uh, not to get all political, but Jeff Deal is, a, is basically a guy who independents can, can count on, you know? <laughs> it's true. I mean, yep. He really is. Uh, we're having a, a fundraiser for his campaign uh, at Owen O'Leary's in Southboro. It's on Red on Route 9, 50 Turnpike Road. And that's uh, Thursday night. At uh, six thirty, six thirty to eight thirty, stop by for some food, say hello, and uh, Jeff Deal, and I'll be there, and I think Fred Smurlis might be there too. <clears throat> it's at Owen O'Leary's, Southboro, Massachusetts, on Route Nine. I heard he just uh, got Christy Noem's endorsement. Did he? Yeah, she's pretty. She's pretty good looking for a governor. She's a fine girl, and she can ride a horse. She right. Well, that's <laughs> that's part of it, I think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not not to stir up trouble. Rain it in. Rain hey, it hey. in. Oh, let's saddle this after the show. Are we galloping along on this? You guys are unstable. <laughs> but what the hey? I've heard this tale before. I know you have. <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> the main topic. Oh, oh. Yeah. That's the last straw. <laughs> it's a pretty good bit. <laughs> oh, bit? Oh, look. You got a bit of a bit of a bit of Enough with this stuff. You guys, honestly, you you all started. You know, you're always trying to stir up trouble. I already used that. Oh, you that's did? Right. You're so high. Oh, that's right. Shit, that's it. <laughs> what, what are you high on? Romalar cough syrup? <laughs> okay, now, so, uh, <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? No. Uh, hold on. You have moved from Snapple. Here's Let me badmouth a couple of products. All right, go ahead. Snapple. I loved it. I, I swore by it. They didn't, they didn't reward me. Did, did we get them as a sponsor? No. Did they change their bottles? Yeah. They're not glass. They're plastic now. Do we hate them for that? Certainly. Does it say on their bottle anymore, made from the best stuff on earth? No. So that leads all of us to believe that it's made from mm, the second best stuff on earth mm. or third. Or maybe they don't even want to mention what number it comes in on the standings. But it's not made from the best stuff on earth because if it was, it would be on their bottle. Mm. So Snapple... Fucked up, big time. They lost me as a customer, and I was good for three, four Snapples a day. Think about this. We're into episode 186, and so for 186 weeks, yeah. you've Snapple. been drinking Snapple out of right. those glass right. bottles until they change They them. don't answer. So now what am I doing? Yeah. Let me hold this up to the camera. Is this the camera right here, Ben? <laughs> Can you hold that up for pure, pure leaf pure raspberry? Leaf. Now, it's not the same as Snapple, but it's good. And they're in a plastic bottle, too. And it's cheaper than the, than the uh, Snapple that Describe I used. Describe the taste of that, Mike. It's like, it kind of tastes like tea-ish, and yeah. it's raspberry, yeah. raspberry and Yeah, raspberry. There he goes. <laughs> so if you were on the Food Network oh. right now, how would you describe that uh, the, t- the flavor of that tea? It's good. 
It's good. Is it as good as my grandma's coffee cake? No, no. <laughs> my grandma's coffee cake is the best coffee cake in the world. And Billy knows because every Christmas, Billy sends coffee cakes to everybody he knows across the country. How many do you send out every year? 20? Uh, overall, between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, I, I'm up about, about two dozen. <laughs> two dozen <laughs> coffee cakes. And last year, I, got, I, I thought of you guys, too. And I know how you both love them and you talk about them all the time. And I thought, why not? What you know, a great gift. You know, people you know, think no. that, oh, no, I don't need a fruitcake. No, this isn't a fruitcake. No, if you've no, never no. had one, no. he's the, oh, you so can't good. eat just one piece. And the first piece no. is going to be a big one. And when you <laughs> heat it, if you heat them up, it's even, and when the things you can put with it, either ice cream or oh, whipped sure. cream or something. Well, you know, just... when they make the uh, annual seasonal uh, pumpkin spice oh. coffee cake from my grandma's, uh. you, uh, Bob, the, but the owner of the company told me, he says, you put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds. seconds. And you put some vanilla ice cream on top, and oh, yeah. you can't for Thanksgiving dessert. You can't go can't go wrong. And the blueberry is just outstanding. The oh, it's the best. Everybody it's my loves favorite. It. It's the best. Why Everybody do you have a picture of a Snapple guy up here? Uh, you you remember the Snapple lady? No. You don't remember Should the I? Snapple lady? That was a huge ad campaign. I was in the drunk mid-90s. that night. <laughs> in the mid '90s. Oh, look at her. You probably remember. I was well, uh, I was real uh, drunk that night. Then turns out she was a huge cokehead. Well, for wow. a decade. Oh, so it wasn't just the alcohol. I was. I had a. So I had a night with her. She said, "I did try coke and I loved it. I started to do cocaine in 1980, right after I graduated college. By 1989, I could press my cheek and blood would come out of my nose. Made, made from the best of. stuff on earth. <laughs> oh man! Wow. Well, that's just gross. Thanks for sharing that with us, though, because now I got that to think about when I go out for a burger after the podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> blood coming out of her. What was it? Snuggle, snits, press her cheek, and blood would come out of her nose. Nice. <laughs> it's on demand. Does the Red Cross know about this? All right. Where was I? Does anybody remember where I was? No. Oh yeah. Okay, I got it. I was going to tell you about how Go GoFundMe sucks. Is this news? Yes. <laughs> And now the news. You know that thing, go, go, go fund me. Are you, I tell them, go fund yourself. <laughs> and they get it, all right? No, I'll, let's get serious here. GoFundMe is allowing a small fortune to be collected for the kin of the Minneapolis gunman who was fatally shot by cops after he fired at his neighbors. Oh, yeah, and he just barely missed her two kids. Yeah, while she's cooking for you. Yeah. While hardworking Manhattan bodega clerk Jose Alba's fund got the axe from GoFundMe. So you got a guy who's shooting up innocent, a house full of kids and innocent people, and they have a Go, GoFundMe page, and they say, oh, that's okay. But because the bodega uh, manager there, uh, Jose Alba, yep. because he supposedly committed a crime that had to do with violence, they have a policy. Yeah, the crime when they of want to implement it. Yeah. Y- yes. When they want to implement it, they can say, okay, you know, we have a policy. If you're involved in a violent crime, you can't have a GoFundMe page. Unless it's one that we think is... Yeah. I mean, the double standard is ridiculous. The guy's like Jack Dorsey. Uh, the GoFundMe page for Alba, who, was, who killed an ex-con attacker in an apparent self-defense at the store, got pulled a day after his case came to light. And they had raised $20,000, but they're not going to give it to him. They give it back to the donors, and they're not going to give it to the guy, Jose Alba, yeah. who they sent to the prison. He got an infection when he was in there. He didn't even do anything wrong. So he's an innocent man who they're taking away. GoFundMe, though, says that this guy who shot up the house filled with the kids, and, the, and he got killed by the cops. Yeah. His kin, the GoFundMe page is for his family. That's okay. I see. You know. So they have two standards there, and I think they suck. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who's running that company, but and the GoFundMe is a, is a noble thing. If you say if you take it on its honorable face and say, people who need money, you can have GoFundMe, and it helps them. That's yeah. great. Yeah. But if you're going to sit there and make political judgments or stupid, uh, erroneous judgments on guilt or innocence before cases are even uh, decided, and then take away a guy's chances... They suck, okay? GoFundMe sucks, and I will never use them. And, Billy, the exception would be if, let's say, you needed 50 bucks, you wanted to buy a nice sweater. Right, right. I would just give you the 50 bucks. I, and as a good friend, I, I would appreciate that. <laughs> I, but GoFundMe, I, I, think they're, I think they get their noses in this stuff, and they, they make money on it, obviously, because oh, yeah. otherwise, yeah. how could they have it? And they, they're making judgments that are wrong. Don't you guys think so? Yeah, totally, totally. I threw that story out there because I knew you'd all agree with me. 
You know, GoFundMe sucks. That's the that's gonna be the name of this episode, Ben. Got it. When it hits the air, which it does in the morning, the day after we record it, like clockwork. I'm gonna I think it should be titled The GoFundMe Sucks Episode. You know? Okay, write that and high school reunion no way. talk. <laughs> <laughs> All of that in the title. And now the news. <laughs> Thinking of shaving my head, I don't have to because I'm not bald now. Any because it's Dr. Robert Leonard, but I'm thinking of shaving my head for the summer. Yep. Because it's because uh, it's cooler. Is Why? This, is this I saw you on the golf course, Billy. You like your hair is very very short. I have no hair. I, and it's, <laughs> and his socks are very very long. He's yes. got long yes. socks and yeah. short hair. Yeah. I'm but upside down. What he can looks I say? so comfortable <laughs> compared to me. I mean, I'm out there. Like, my hair's getting a little long. It was, it was sweaty, greasy, it's humid. And I, I was hey, we were ball. getting rained on. I was hitting the ball <laughs> shitty. I looked like, honestly, like like something a cat dragged in, to quote your dad. Yeah, exactly. Ten miles of bad road. I used to go in. Dad's, uh, Willie, uh, Willie his, Billy's dad used to own a restaurant in Manchester, the most popular restaurant in my hometown, Manchester, Connecticut. And I'd walk in and, you know, I'd go visit Billy there. When he was working, I'd walk in and his dad would be in the front bar of the restaurant. I'd walk in and his dad would go, ah, oh, jeez, look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> All customers would look around, turn around and look, and I'd, I'd wave at everybody. Well, my uh, dad would play that audience, too. Though, yeah, Because right? there was a small bar with about 100 seats in it. Yeah. No, so he, as soon as Mike walked in, oh, great. you know, he, with the whole group, he says, ah, oh, look what the cat dragged yeah, in. Yeah, look, oh, here we go. Here, here comes he trouble. I was ready for it. I, I, th- I took it as a compliment, because at, totally. at least he recognized me. Exactly. Um, he knew your name, at least. Now, does anybody have a thought on this thing that we just heard? I, I, this uh, what? Who's the senator from, uh, uh, from John, Missouri? Josh Hawley. Yes. Josh Hawley. Josh Hawley. He, did you see him going at that lady with the th- thing? Is she was talking about cisgender and all that stuff? Yeah, we oh, played yeah. it last oh. week. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, good. So we did go. So you have some knowledge of what I'm talking about. Yes. 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 Um, they're talking about men. Men can't. I think it was the Governor DeSantis got up in front of a crowd of people. It was a couple of days ago. He says, "Can we agree on one thing? Men can't have babies." Yep. Which was just great. He's wonderful. The he fact just that he has to, to say it out loud, you know, I, I, it makes you so wonder. It's funny that it's like that he has to say yeah. that, yeah. but he does have to say that, and uh, it, it's just I don't know. To me, it's it's the worst topic because. To, to say that you can have a valid argument about the fact that men can't have babies or some people say they can and they're going to argue with you about it? This birthing person? You, you're going to argue? What's a birthing person? But more, more importantly, it's just like saying... Soon it's going to be birthing pod. That's all they're going to be. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not a, even a person. A not pod. even a person right. anymore. Just yeah. a birthing pod. Yep. They're going to clone them, put or them in these little pods. Container. Yep. Mother a, can come over and, and just massage the fetus as it grows. In a lab. In the pod. Never mind the fetus. How about the whole body? In the pod. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Uh, but I just I think that you. the that fact that they, oh. oh, God. <laughs> the fact that they have that as a topic on any news channel, and the fact that any news channel would def- defend someone's right to say something as stupid as well, that men can have babies? It's nuts. But they're, and they're, then they try to breastfeed. And they're, de- they're defending it politically, though. Chest feed. Chest feet, yeah, right? Uh, the how the hair Why? on your head. and we're supposed to uh, we're supposed it's to go along gross. with their delusion. That's great. It's just gross, yeah. right? So I I'm here to tell you that I do know the definition of a woman. Well, and does you, that make you have your hand a... on a button over there like you're going to blow? No, no, no. <laughs> I just I was going to play some music or something to accommodate that, you to accompany Joe, your. Um... That's not Joe Biden's football button, is it? Uh, uh, don't do it. No, no. Don't do it. No, it's not. I got a lot of stuff to do before the world comes to an end. <laughs> uh, so songs that, that I, I've thought to myself, there's a huge, long, crazy, unbelievable list of songs that have the word woman in them. And clearly all these artists at least believed that they thought they knew the definition of a woman. Now, where are these songs from? What period? What time period? All periods. I see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> every period. How dare you? Uh, you know, every... Three, four weeks you get. So now, I'm going to just name a couple, and I want to see if you guys can name a couple of the that are on my list, and and that will, and who did them? Oh God. Okay. Just like you, a woman, you, you can see the list, right? Back there. No. Oh, okay. Just like a woman, Bob Dylan. And she makes love just like a woman. Yes, Bob Dylan. Yeah, Good call. Right. What's his real name? Uh, Bob Zimmerman. Where was he born? Hibbing, uh, uh, Hibbing, uh, Minnesota. 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 Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. 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 And name three of his album titles. Uh, Blonde on Blonde. Um, 
<laughs> blood on the tracks. Tracks. Yeah. And, and Bob Dylan. Positively positive. Free wheel. All right. Whatever. Come on. Come on. That, this yeah. isn't about Bob Dylan. Come on. Oh, jeez. Well, he did a good job with it. You know, Billy had a uh, Billy had a favorite band. He made him one of my favorite bands when we were growing up. And he had a very you had a very nice stereo system with reel to reel tapes. Oh yeah, yeah. And Velvet Underground. Oh wow, Billy, mm. huge fan of the Velvet Underground. Oh, totally. Lou Reed, Lou Reed. The early stuff, though. I mean, the later Lou Reed stuff was fine or whatever. But the the, the Velvet Underground stuff was the classic. Sweet Jane was a classic. Sweet Jane. Yeah, but you know what's uh, something rock about and that? roll? Those rock albums, yes, sound, rock and roll. Those albums sound good loud. Yes. Very good. The yes, louder, the better. Good. They just everything jumps through those speakers. Um, can you name a song that has "woman" in the title? American Woman. Let's get Joe and Jerry to sing that later. Oh, I think all right. Then. Great idea. That's a that's a perfect example. How about well done front cell? How about "Woman Woman"? Yeah, I was thinking the title. Gary but Puckett. Did it. Gary fuck up in the credibility gap. <laughs> I was Gary Puckett in the union gap. Yeah. The woman woman. He goes, because you know what's weird about that? He goes, woman, whoa, whoa, woman, have you got cheating on your mind? He's accusing her out of the box <laughs> of cheating. I think he had an Did idea. Did John Lennon have a song called Woman? He yeah, had a song yeah. called it's Woman from Double Fantasy, yeah. which was Woman, and then how, to Yoko, you know, I can hardly express. Oh, Remember that that's one? That's right. Yeah. About Gold Dust Woman. Fleetwood Mac. Yes. Wow. Yeah. How about Gypsy Woman? Who did it? Gypsy Woman. That's it. Uh, from the 60s. Uh, oh, uh, Witchy uh, Woman. The Eagles. Witchy Woman, the Eagles in the 70s. Wow. See that? See how this is, guys are doing this is great. blossoming now. Really? Who did? What's the matter, Smitty? What I happened? dropped the cap to my uh, my my <laughs> Snapple. I'm drinking Snapple. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't <laughs> what was the Helen Reddy song? I, I am woman. woman. Hear, oh, hear me roar. roar right? And mm-hmm. I am not a fucking whore. <laughs> Because <laughs> whatever she did, she she still she did she die? I don't know. I think she might have died. Can you check and see if Helen Reddy died? Because I might have a dream about if her. If she's tonight. into her 80s, she probably did. Yeah, really? Mm. Did she have a dream? Ready? Did she die? She died September 29th, 2020. Uh, cancel that dream. How old was she? She was. Oh God, she's 50, 60, 50, 60 79. 77. Ooh. 78? 78. 78, okay. Yeah. She was kind of, you know, I mean, she did the whole, you know, yeah. I am woman, hear me roar yeah. thing, but she, I, there's been a lot tougher women than her in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, I didn't like that song she did with her, uh, you and me against the world. Remember that song? No. She sang it with her daughter on stage or something like that. <laughs> mm. And what that illustrated to me was that she had just dumped the husband or something, because now it's you and me against the world, and, you know, where's the guy? Then it's not sh- him, him, and her. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mean Woman Blues. Roy Orbison. Yep. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, pretty Woman. Oh, Roy, Roy Orbison. Orbison. Ah, yeah. The bigger one. Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon. Gary Puckett. No. Uh, who Girl, is that? you be a woman soon. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. No. Neil Diamond. Oh, shit. Girl, <laughs> don't take my <laughs> hand. Oh, God. What was yeah. Black Magic Woman? Oh, Santana. Hey, good one. Right? Yeah. Johan. How about She's Always a Woman? Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Very good. Um, how about uh, L.A. Woman? The Doors. Doors. How about Womanizer? But do you see what I'm saying? It's like half the songs are about women. <laughs> can, can I stretch that? <laughs> That's bad. I'm sorry. I'm telling I'll you. I'll retract that. <sighs> see, so but Lady they... Guy, who was that again? Britney Spears. Britney Spears. Yeah. What's that, what else you got on that list there, Mike? I don't know. I, 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 I mean, I'm just, I'm just throw, I was going to throw it out there as a thing because there's so many woman songs. Is there any more? Yeah. That's the end. Oh, of your there's list. a million more. <laughs> yeah, but that's the end of your list. Uh, there's well, no, I, I don't make. I made a list just off the top of my uh, head. I didn't go googling it or anything. Uh, you want to Google and add something to the show here a little bit, Ben? That's fine with me. Spice it up. <laughs> no, that's fine. You do whatever you like over there. You got the button. Yeah, right. right you got the keyboard. And you know Whitney Houston, I'm every woman. Oh, she, she's not though. See, I know she's not. She's not every woman. Aretha Franklin. What about you? Make me feel like a natural woman. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's a great. Do you know who wrote that? Carol King. Really? Yeah. yeah. Look it up. No. Carol King wrote that. No. <laughs> <laughs> when a man loves a woman. Oh, so J- Percy Sledge. Percy Sledge. How, no well, woman, you, no cry. You never oh, got Jim oh. Marley. Sorry. Go ahead. You never got Gypsy Woman. Who did it? I still don't know. Brian Highland. No, no, no. There was a, there was another group. 
She no. was a gypsy woman. It was a uh, Jesus. <laughs> singing it the same. Ah. All right, in any event, I can't man, believe I feel like a woman, Shania Twain. Uh, and now, why does she feel like a woman? I, I mean, of course you feel like a woman because you're a she woman. Is one. Yeah. See, this is what drives me crazy with this whole gender thing. It really does. Now, boy George, yeah. you know, I, he, he acts like a woman, sounds like a woman, but his name is Boy George, so he's clearly not a woman. All right, let's get Joe and Jerry in here to straighten this mess up. What do you think? <laughs> like, can we get them in here, please? Mm. Let's get him in here right now. Do a song about women. Joe. Yeah, Mike. Do a song about a woman. All right, Mike. Jerry, woman, woman. I'm going to do my best. How about American woman? Good idea. American woman. Stay away from me. American woman. Mama, let me be. Don't come hanging around my door. I don't want to see your face no more, you whore. I got more important things to do than spend my time growing old with you. Now, woman, at Shaw's, I said stay away. American woman, listen what I say. Oh, this is your famous uh, instrumental interlude here. I believe it's a Burton Cummings on the guitar. American woman, get away from me. American woman, you really smell like pee. Don't bring your knockers around my door. I don't want to see your shadow no more. Colored lights can hypnotize, sparkle someone else's thighs. Now, woman! I said, get away. American woman, come give me a leg. You got a filthy ass mind, Joe. As if you don't. Remember that time with the hooker in Detroit? Oh, yeah, she got me good. Wallet and everything. American woman, I said, get away. American woman, listen what I say. Don't come a hanging around my door. Come on and get my thing on the floor. I don't need your your war machines. I don't need your your discarded jeans. Colored light skin hip. This sucks. Spark of someone else's eyes. Now, woman. I'll take care of it from here, Troop. American woman! Mama, let me be. Hey, 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 go! Gotta get away, gotta get away. Now go, go, go. I'm gonna leave you, woman. He's gonna leave you, woman. Goodbye, American woman. Goodbye, American woman. Goodbye, American woman. Canadian pricks. Bastards knocking our women like that. <laughs> <laughs>